Now when you're not here, you're church call. At, uh, at this point, I would yeah. like to uh, yeah, ask Pastor <laughs> Ali Wagner from Alpharetta Presbyterian Church to lead us in an invocation. Good evening. Join in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the gift of life. We give thanks for the beauty and the diversity of your creation and for your gracious blessing that accompanies us each and every day. This night we lift up to you the citizens of Milton, Georgia. We lift up to you all who labor here, visit here, worship here. Give direction and wisdom to this council, we pray, as they seek to provide leadership and service in this place and at this time. Bless all city employees and staff. Enrich our lives with your grace. Help us to live abundantly and fully in this Easter season. O God, as you have taught us to pray for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, so too do we pray that our words and our actions might please you. You seek and you promise a community of justice and kindness and humility and peace You lift up the persecuted. You lift up those who grieve. You hear the prayers of all who call upon you in need. Align our lives with your intentions, we pray. Strengthen us to live faithfully. Give light to our paths so that with joy we may seek the common good in your service. You have given each of us gifts. Help us to use those gifts because they come from you for your service and in love and in service to neighbor. We pray for the world this night. We pray for our nation and our state. We pray for all those whose lives have been torn apart by recent storms. And we give you thanks for each one who seeks to offer service to the public. We give thanks for service organizations like the Boy Scouts of America. We ask that you hear this and all of our prayers and that in your mercy you grant all that is good and right and according to your purposes. We pray and we labor and we hope until your kingdom comes and your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, for the invitation. Thank you very much for being here. Okay, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, May 16, 2011, to order. Will City Clerk please call the roll and make general announcements? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the May 16, 2011 regular meeting. However, I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Additionally, those attending the meeting who would like to provide public comment either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you're required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on an item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards were received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization if applicable. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association, provided, however, that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of said organization on a form provided by the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within this chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Councilmember Karen Thurman. Here. Councilmember Julie Zahner Bailey. Here. Councilmember Bill Luss. Here. Councilmember Bert Hewitt is excused on a business trip. When he uh, talked to him a little bit ago, his wife will send a note in. Make sure he's excused. <laughs> Councilmember Joe Longoria. Here. And Councilmember Alan Tart. Here. And tonight we have the Boy Scouts of uh, America Troop 3000 that will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand.
I'd like to uh, give a big thanks to Troop 3000 for being here. And uh, if you guys would like to come up real quick, and maybe I'll ask the council to come down and get a quick picture if you don't mind. Okay, again, good evening. Welcome you here to the City of Milton. Um, we can move on to uh, approval of our agenda. And I know we've got a couple things to consider. Next item is approval of meeting agenda, agenda item number 11098. Okay, do we uh, have any items from staff to be considered? Just a couple, Mr. Mayor, and they're more procedural than anything. Uh, the first is I'd like to uh, move the new business, the one item under new business and the agenda to after reports and presentations. I'd also like to add to reports and presentations an update on the uh, Earth Day event. And uh, that should do it for us. Okay. And any other items? Bill? Uh, point of information on the uh, zoning agenda. The second and third items. The third item deals with the definition for landscape business. The uh, second item, uh, I believe, deals with uh, revisions to the uh, zoning ordinance and also covers the definition of uh, landscape business. I guess just for, in the interest of logic, shouldn't the uh, definition discussion come before the, uh, the other discussion? We could have the discussion either way. That was the order that the Planning Commission brought them. Um, forward the um, additional definition that's included in RZ 1006 um, was added after we had our discussions and the work sessions and that was the follow-up to the last uh, meeting that we had discussing this item uh, we did advertise for definitions 
wholly so we didn't call out specifically just the landscape definition so we can add that new definition in there as well. Is that right, Robin? Or am I off? I mean, yeah, commercial vehicle. Yeah. We need to do it for the next set. Oh, we need to add that in the next set. Pardon me, we'll add that in the next set. Because they didn't discuss that at plan commission, did they? Does that answer? That's the does. change. No. I'm knowing. Sorry, I'm I, I was a little confused too. Um, the commercial vehicle definition that's included in RZ 1006, is that what you're refer referencing? No. No. Uh, oh, RZ, I'm sorry. Uh, I have zero, deep zero in the weeds <laughs> 1008 uh, deals with the definition of the landscape. Oh, and business. I see. And RZ 1006 uh, addresses the definition or approves or asks or calls for a de uh, approval of the definition. So we're so approving the. Yes, sir. I'm definition. sorry. Are you thinking we should would reverse the two? Reverse the two. Would that You're welcome to hear it in that order. I'm going to change the agenda. That's fine, I don't sir. think uh, the council have any issue. With, yeah. Sorry to if you would like to make there. that change, Bill. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so we're approving our meeting agenda with uh, staff recommended changes. And uh, Bill, if you want to clarify, we just want to take those two items and reverse the order. Uh, if we could uh, reverse the order of uh, zoning agenda items. RZ1006 and RZ1008. Okay. All right. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, second motion. I have a motion by Councilmember Thurman, second by Councilmember Lusk. Uh, any discussion? Just for purposes of the record, the motion is to approve the agenda as modified. As modified by staff and by Councilmember Lusk. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, next item is public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and the city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. There's no discussion on items on the consent agenda or first presentation from the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to our city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of the city council in conversation. When your name is called, please step forward and, and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes for remarks. City clerk, do we have any public comment? There's no general public comment, sir. Okay. Well, then, uh, we'll move on to our consent agenda. We'll, city clerk, please say on that item or those items. Our first item is approval of the April 18, 2011 work session minutes, agenda item number 11099. Next is approval of a professional services agreement between the City of Milton and Los and Associates, Inc. to provide engineering, design, and construction administration for the development of a two-acre park through an intergovernmental agreement with Fulton County Board of Education for an amount not to exceed $14,750, agenda item number 11100. Next is approval of a Parks and Recreation Event License Agreement between the City of Milton, securing a Mind Foundation, Inc., and Up With Kids Sports, Inc., to offer a youth basketball program. Agenda item number 11101. Next is approval of a revised Parks and Recreation Event License Agreement between the City of Milton and Colleen Riddick of Core Physique to offer fitness camp classes and other related programs. This is agenda item number 11102. Our fifth and final consent agenda item this evening is approval of a transmittal letter requesting a grant from the Georgia Urban Forestry Council to prepare a tree inventory assessment and management plan. This is agenda item number 11103. Okay, do I have a motion to second on the consent agenda? Mayor, I move that we accept the consent agenda as read by uh, the clerk. I'll second the motion. Okay, a motion by Council Member Longoria, second by Council Member Bailey. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, well, uh, let's move on to our reports and presentations. Will the city clerk please sound those items? Our first presentation will be presentation of the Earth Day recap. Miss Cindy Ede. Thank you, Mayor and Council and city staff. 
I just want to thank you all so much for your support of Earth Day. Um, I think for those that, that might have attended, you would say that it was a success. We grew the event to over 500 people this year um, at beautiful Birmingham Park. Um, we hope that it becomes a, an annual thing. Um, and I really want to thank Troop 3000 for all of their help in preparing the park um, and also make a special presentation for Walter Dean because it happens to be, I think, his birthday today or very soon. Happy birthday, Walter, and I'm going to turn it over. Happy birthday. I'm going to turn it over to our co-chairs, John McPhail and Jack Linden, to make the uh, presentation. Thank you. Excuse me, John. You look like you're coming up for a zoning case of <laughs> suit and tie. Sorry, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> now somebody wants to commit the development fraud. Relax, right there. relax. <laughs> I, uh, as I think all of you know, I'm a co-chair of Milton Gross Green, and I want to thank the city and staff and uh, uh, city manager Lagerbloom and the council for their support of Earth Day. And uh, it went a lot smoother this year than it did in our first attempt, and uh, I think we got a little better guidance, and we got used to doing some of the things that we needed to do, and we understood better what the expectations were. But I think anybody that was out there saw it was a pretty, pretty fun time, and uh, music, free food, uh, stuff to look at, stuff to play with, some things to take home. Uh, we'd like more things to take home next year. We've got to tell the sponsors that. But I do want to thank uh, several people on the city staff, uh, Carl Lucas and Matt Marietta, Lynn Tully, uh, Cindy Bonacci, and uh, Jason, of course, uh, with, the, with the photographs and the publicity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how he does all the things he, he does. My wife called about getting her father a, a thing for Memorial Day and the, the, couldn't make the things come up. She tried 15 ways of putting in the date, and she sent an email, and like five minutes later, Jason called. It was like, <laughs> he's always there 24 hours a day. It's amazing. But uh, we, we were pleased with the event, and, uh, and it worked real, really well in that big field up there. I'm glad to see that put to some good use. And I think, uh, you know, the, the Milton Roundup may have a little brother in the spring. We may, may have something that kind of splits the year and mark, marks the passing of the seasons in, in two different ways. And, you know, you've got the, the planting and that plowing. It sort of goes back to the old agricultural community. But uh, this year, we had a number of sponsors. Um, of course, the person that kept track of all of this and helped to keep us on track was Cindy E. And, uh, I want to thank our city manager for seeing that she came here. I, I, we laughed about it because she was part of Milton Groves Green originally, and when she had to leave because there was a conflict with Keep North Fulton Beautiful, I thanked her for everything she had done and wrote her an email and said, you never know what's going to happen. Someday we may be a little city here and we may need an environmental coordinator and you may come back and I'll work side by side with you. Just, you just don't know. And a couple of years later, that's exactly what happened and it's been, it's been very helpful. Um, we had uh, $2,300 budgeted from the city. Uh, we raised roughly $7,000 in cash contributions uh, from sponsors. Uh, and some of those were, for instance, we got uh, Waste Management to kick in a larger sponsorship, and they became the T-shirt sleeve sponsor, as we call them, because uh, they had their logo on the sleeves with Milton Gross Green. We didn't, we didn't do it up like a NASCAR thing where we gave everybody a little piece of the shirt, but we just put theirs on the sleeve and applied their donation that way. Um, the people on the committee in particular, um, Kathy Johnson is the environmental person. There's a lot of good educational uh, stuff out there and, uh, for the environmental part of it, and she's carrying on the educational part of this for environmental education in our schools with some, some money that the city has granted, and we're trying to get some money from some other sources. Uh, we had roughly $4,000 in in-kind donations, so roughly $11,000 in outside money came in to help put the thing on, and that uh, was good. We hope to do better than that in the future, and fundraising is one of the things we need to think about. But uh, we had a lot of cooperation from everybody out there, and I had cooperation mostly from this man and, and uh, his wife, uh, Francia Linden, doesn't come up here very much, but you see all the nice artwork that we get and all the things that are always a, attached to the publicity that Jason does, and so, you know, copyright Milton Grows Green or copyright Francia Linden. She's a talented artist and, uh, and gives it all a very nice face and a nice presentation. I, I don't know that it would look as good, but we might have have as good a success, but it wouldn't look as good. And certainly, Jack uh, just is the patience of Job. And uh, if you had to have a co-chair who you knew was always going to back you up and always be there and always be reliable, 
that's the person you would pick. So uh, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. And a couple of words of thanks from me. I, I, I was in charge of the logistics, and uh, I tell you, we couldn't have done it without Optech. Uh, Optech did one hell of a job for us. Uh, Sean Garrison was just uh, one of the easiest people to work with. He was always available when I needed him. So I was really pleased with that. And the other people I'd like to give us some special thanks to were already mentioned here, uh, Boy Scout Troop 3000. Uh, these fellows, I'm not sure, well, there were, there were actually 40 people out there on a Saturday about three weeks before the Earth Day event that went out there and spent the entire day on Saturday, including two hours in the rain, clearing three miles worth of trails, hiking trails, and building a stream crossing that went from the field where we had the event uh, back into the back forest where the trails were set up. It was really remarkable, and the trails are still there. It's still, uh, we go, I go out there at least once a week to walk around back there. It's really beautiful. So uh, one of the things we did on the committee was we put together thank you certificates for all the sponsors, and I have one here for Troop 3000. So if Walter would like to come up, we can present that. Here you go, Walter. Uh, Thank you, Jack. Suitable framing. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just going to stop. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'd like to uh, thank you, Mayor and, and City Council, for uh, all of your support of Scouts and on behalf of Birmingham United Methodist, which is our chartered organization, and the Boy Scouts and all these fine young men that are here. Uh, we appreciate partnering with the city. We're committed to community service. Uh, we've been involved in the Adopt-A-Road program also as evidence of that, and I can see us being a long-term partner and a cheap labor source uh, <laughs> to uh, help support your future uh, plans in the park. Uh, it doesn't seem right to be presented with an award that we had so much fun uh, doing something, but thank you very much. Thank all of you. Thank you. I'd just like to say a couple words so we, before we move on. Um, I'm sure that uh, anybody that, uh, that uh, participated or, or was present at Earth Day uh, had a great time. I thought it was a wonderful event. Um, I just want to say thanks again to a few people and I'm not going to try to name everyone because there's probably you know hundreds of other people that helped out and all that but there's a few people in here that I want to just re you know rethink uh, obviously Troop 3000 thank you guys for your help um, I want to thank our staff Cindy and Jason and I know Carter's not here I don't think Carter's here but Chris and Lynn you know everybody our entire staff from the city um, thank John where's John at there, thank John uh, McPhail, um, Jack, and, and Francine. If she's not, she, I don't think she's here. Um, certainly want to thank all of our sponsors and uh, make sure that you know. Hopefully, they'll they'll uh, they uh, all the sponsors I talked to seem to really enjoy it. Um, and uh, also Cindy, Cindy did a great job. Um, I think it just it was a much you know, it's getting better every year. So we thank you for all your hard work. And I do have to say, not to pick on Jack, but. Everybody that I talked to from staff and, and on the committees and, and helping out kept coming back around and mentioning Jack's name and what a great job and how much you had done. So thank you, you Jack. And I obviously want to thank all our citizens and everybody who was there. So it was a great event and hopefully we'll keep improving and moving on in the future. So thanks again. Uh, let's see. The city clerk will sound our next item. Our next item is presentation of a Memorial Day proclamation presented by Mayor Joe Lockwood. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Happy birthday, Mr. Dean. Yeah. <laughs> you asked. <No. laughs> you could sing. You could sing. <laughs> All right, I'll read this proclamation. Whereas Memorial Day was first officially proclaimed on May 5th, 1868, 
by General John Logan in his General Order No. 11. And in 1968, by an act of Congress, it was determined that the holiday would be observed on the last Monday in May. And whereas, from the opening battles of the American Revolution through the turmoil of the Civil War to World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, to the Persian Gulf, and today's operations in the war, war on terror in Afghanistan, Iraq, and all around the world, the members of our military have built a tradition of honorable and faithful service. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember the more than one million Americans who have died to preserve our freedom, and more than 140,000 citizens who were prisoners of war, and all of those who were declared missing in action. We also honor our veterans for their dedication to America and their sacrifice. And whereas we have the honor and privilege of living in a free country, and Georgia has a rich history of great leaders who died fighting for, for a great nation, today all who wear the uniform of the United States are serving at a crucial hour in our history and each has answered a great call to serve our nation on the front lines of freedom. Let us pray for the safety and strength of our troops and for God's blessings on them and their families and those who have lost loved ones. And whereas on this Memorial Day, we honor our fallen soldiers and their commitment to our country and their legacy of patriotism. We honor the sacrifices of the many men and women who answered the nation's call to duty and fought with honor and valor and in the end, gave the ultimate sacrifice to safeguard the rights of Americans. And whereas, by giving their lives in this cause of freedom, these heroes have protected and inspired all Americans, and we are truly grateful for the sacrifice. And whereas, the citizens of Milton join with people across the nation in remembrance of those who died courageously while in the service of their country during war. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and the city council of the city of Milton, Georgia, hereby dedicate and Proclaim Monday, May 30th, 2011 as Memorial Day in the city of Milton and call this observance to the attention of all of our citizens, given under my hand and seal in the city of Milton, Georgia, on the 16th day of May, 2011. Do we have, uh, do, do we have some folks to present this to? Okay. All right. Thank you. Also, want to just, uh, as most of you know, um, just we, uh, the city of Milton, this will be our third uh, I believe Memorial Day, the fourth Memorial Day uh, service uh, here here at the city, and uh, one of just a, a great ceremony. And I hope uh, our citizens, everybody can can attend. Also, want to thank uh, Councilmember Lust for the memorials, and he has taken that on himself, and that has grown every year and uh, become really a great thing for our city. So, thank you for that. Thank you for to everyone else who's involved. Okay. There's no items under the first presentation or public hearing. We'll move on to the zoning agenda. The city clerk, please read those rules and sound the next item. Um, under uh, vote, we moved the new business item um, approval of a resolution amending resolution number 080109, a resolution appointing a member to the City of Milton Design Review Board for District 6. This is agenda item number 11. Dash one zero four, presented by Mayor Joe Lockwood. Actually, this one's going to be presented uh, yeah. District Six. So, Councilmember yeah. Hart, if you want to introduce order. your uh, uh, appointee. Although, if you give me a, if you don't mind me putting the plug in for your absolutely <laughs> appointee, um, I've uh, known uh, Tim Bryant for quite a while and and has seen his work and I venture to say probably. Everywhere you drive around Milton, if there are homes or buildings that you look at and you go, wow, that's really nice and that captures Milton, I'll bet you, you know, there's a, a very strong possibility that Tim's been involved in that. So uh, I think uh, for the DRB, you got a good pick there. All right, thank you. Um, so I'd like to introduce to you um, Mr. Tim Bryan. Um, Mr. Bryan lives at 120 Aaron Wood Court in Milton and owns a, uh, a business in Milton as well at 815 Mayfield Road. Um, is the owner of Bryan Residential Planning Company. Um, as far as Mr. Uh, Bryan's credentials, as um, the mayor pointed out with that, um, raving, that raving endorsement there, um, Mr. Uh, Bryan has um, over 24 years experience in uh, residential home design. 
um, and new and re- uh, new home renovation and planning, as well as neighborhood architectural guidelines. Um, he uh, has a degree in um, from the University of Tennessee School of Architecture, a bachelor in architectural design. Um, and in addition to the mayor's home, which we all know is very beautiful, um, and homes across the country, uh, Mr. Bryan's uh, homes have been featured in Atlanta Homes and Lifestyles, Better Homes and Gardens, Southern Living, and uh, Second Home. So um, I do want to thank uh, Ms. Daryl Jan Porter for her service on the DRB for this past, I guess, three and a half years. And um, I want to thank Mr. Bryan for stepping up to the plate for the remainder of this, uh, this term. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Okay. Um, this will, uh, at this point, we'll uh, ask if there's any discussion or does anybody have any questions? If not, do I have a motion and a second? Mayor, I'll put forward a motion to approve the resolution amending resolution number 080109, a resolution appointing a member to the City of Milton Design Review Board for District 6, specifically Mr. Tim Bryan. I'll second it. Okay, got a motion by Council Member Bailey, second by Council Member Thurman. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. So I will be glad to swear Mr. Brian in right now. Thank you, Mayor. I do have to say, when Council Member talked to you to my house, uh, my wife was real excited because we were designing our house. But I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of the design review board member of the city. Of the city. And that I will support and defend the charter thereof. And I will support and defend the charter thereof. As well as the Constitution. As well as the Constitution. And laws of the state of Georgia. And laws of the state of Georgia. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Thank you, Joe. All right, make it official. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your future service. Okay. We'll go back to the no items under uh, first presentation or public hearing, so we're going to move on to the zoning agenda. City clerk, will please. The second regularly scheduled meeting of the month, the mayor and city council consider a zoning agenda. These items include rezoning petitions, modifications of zoning, use permits, and associated concurrent variances. In addition to ordinances, resolutions, and text amendments, the petitions will be heard in the sequence listed on the posted agenda. I would like to acquaint you with some of the rules and procedures for this meeting. The applicant and all those speaking in support of an application will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present the petition. The applicant may choose to save some of the time for rebuttal following the presentation by the opposition. Since the burden of proof is upon the applicant, the applicant will be allowed to make closing remarks provided time remains with the allotted time. The city clerk will be keeping track of time and will inform you periodically of the remaining time for your presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards were received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization, if applicable, before beginning their presentation. The Planning Commission heard the rezoning agenda items and recommendations were forwarded to the Mayor and City Council for consideration and disposition. In addition, the applicant shall not submit material to the Council during the meeting unless requested to do so. All material that you wish to be reviewed by the Council in consideration of your application should be submitted to the staff of the Community Development Department to be included in the normal distribution of packages to the Council. 
When an opponent of a rezoning action has made, within two years immediately preceding the filing of the rezoning action being opposed, campaign contributions aggregating $250 or more to a local government official of the local government, which will consider the application, it shall be the duty of the opponent to file a disclosure with the governing authority of the respective local government at least five days prior to the Planning Commission meeting. A violation of relevant state statute constitutes a misdemeanor. Therefore, if you have contributed $250 or more to a council member and you have not filed a disclosure prior to the Planning Commission meeting, the City Attorney strongly suggests that you have someone else speak for your point of view. Our first zoning item is ZM 11-01, requested by Charles Fight, located at lot number 9, Atlanta National Subdivision, Crooked Stick Drive, to modify condition 1E RZ 85-181 to reduce the 100-foot building setback along the south property lines to 50 feet and to reduce the 100-foot building setback along the west property line to 40 feet. This is agenda item number 11069. First presentation was at the April 11, 2011 regular council meeting. It was deferred at the April 25th regular council meeting. This is being presented by Ms. Lynn Tully. Good evening. Yeah. All right. Real yeah. quick. Sure. Right. Before we get started, um, we had a, I noticed this after we approved the agenda, but there's a sheet here that wanted us to change the agenda name to be. I think what we can do is just make reference to it. Uh, I checked with the city attorney prior to the actual uh, meeting, or prior, prior to that, that actual amendment during the time of the approval of the meeting agenda. Uh, he said if, if we made it, you know, I can let him speak for himself, but the fact that we would just make reference of it during the presentation, um, he's okay with it, particularly because what was advertised is actually more than what is being requested. Oh, perfect. So, okay. Um, we, we should be fine there, but we didn't find need to actually officially do it on the record like what was presented. Cool. Okay. Thanks for checking. To that end, um, I, I do want to clarify that um, the request is to reduce the 100-foot building setback line along the south property line for a distance of 78 feet to a 40-foot building setback versus the 50 that was originally um, included in the request. And then to reduce the 100-foot setback line along the west property line to a 40-foot building setback. So I hope that, that clears up that a little bit. Uh, it has been advertised correctly in the newspapers, and uh, we are... Um, good with the any you know legal ramifications of that so the property is a 3.2 acre undeveloped site it does exist in Atlanta National uh, formerly the estates at, at National it zones to UP and with that original zoning was a hundred foot building setback requirement from the property lines of the ex of the CUP zoning um, this lot has an odd and irregular shape uh, it's kind of a reverse flag lot along Crooked Stick Drive. Um, as you can see, the entry has kind of a very narrow uh, width to it, and then the buildable area is there at the rear portion of the lot. So if we were to continue with a 100-foot building setback, and um, we would have a very difficult time finding a, a place for this property, for this house to be located on the property. The applicant has submitted support letters from the adjacent property owners to the east at 270 Crooked Stick Drive, where the closest residence is located, and another from the estates of Atlanta National Homeowners Association. Um, there is a 30-foot undisturbed buffer in the recommended conditions, as suggested by the applicant. Uh, the City of Milton City Council has approved two previous zoning modifications to reduce the same 100-foot building setback uh, from the property lines in a CUP on Atlanta National Drive and then on Crooked Stick Drive. And then the Fulton County Board of Commissioners in the past has also approved three requests to reduce this 100-foot building setback from the property line of the CUP. Um, based on the odd shape and differing setback requirements that leave the lot with some limited developable area. Staff does recommend approval conditional of this modification uh, to modify the condition to provide a 40-foot building setback line along, along the southern property lines and a 40-foot along the western property line. Again, with the recommended conditions as attached. 
you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer yeah. those now. Yeah, do we have any questions from council to Lynn? Just one quick question. Yes, really? Um, is there any chance that there's going to be another variance associated with this? I know there have been some dialogue as to whether or not the front yard needed a shift or not. And um, if you can just address that, and I guess the point being that if there was going to be in the future, if we can just anticipate that, and or if you could just explain that there perhaps would not be one. We have worked with Mr. Fyde for um, a couple of months now trying to be sure that this house is sited where he wants it to be. Um, and in fact, uh, we did have that discussion as to what is the front property line, what is the rear property line <laughs> for this lot, because it is an odd shaped lot. Um, and this uh, latest site plan actually was submitted April the 20th. And so um, this is the, the latest and, and what we hope to be the last um, submittal and therefore then the last change in property lines. We don't anticipate that it would uh, be any closer um, to any of the existing setbacks than what is shown here. Um, and the reason I ask that is that I know that the adjacent landowner had said that he supports both this variance request as well as any potential second variance request. So just since we had not seen a second variance request, I just wondered if there was a possibility that we would be seeing that should there be um, a different interpretation of, of front yard. To your point, the distance of the house wouldn't be any different from that side yard, whether you called it front yard or side yard. But um, just in the hope of being as transparent as we can be, I just wondered if that was possible, if that would still be coming forward as a second variance. Anything's possible, and if, you know, they encounter some field conditions that would prevent the house being built in that location, um, you know, there, that may happen, but we don't anticipate it happening at this Thank point. you. Sure. There's no other questions, and uh, we'll open it up to uh, those speaking in support of this application. We have Mr. Charles Fight. Good evening, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, thank you uh, for your time this evening. Um, it's uh, very pleasant to actually be doing business for the city of Milton in Milton rather than going downtown, so I'm very appreciative of, of that, and thank you for your time this evening. Uh, if I can um, uh, provide a little bit of uh, history regarding uh, my request and, uh, and uh, moving the build line. Uh, the build line is a perimeter line around Atlanta National Golf Club. Um, as staff had mentioned, it has been moved on, on five other occasions. Uh, the build line was originally created on October 2nd, 1985 uh, by the Fulton County Board of uh, Commissioners. Um, this requested build line modification does not border any residential home sites. Um, and support for this minor modification, uh, as was mentioned, was uh, provided by the closest uh, homeowner as well as the uh, Atlanta National Homeowners Association. Um, we can only guess that the, the <clears throat> intent of the original uh, build line was put in uh, uh, around the entire golf course uh, in anticipation of maybe the development that may border some residences or that type of thing. Um, as just a preventive measure that hasn't occurred, and uh, <clears throat> the line's been uh, been moved on on several occasions. Um, currently, there is well over uh, uh, 100 yards of current uh, buffer between uh, the lot nine property line and the uh, city club uh, area. So, if you look at um, the original uh, picture. Uh, you have a lot line, then you have a buffer uh, that go then goes downgrade, then you have a, a roadway, um, which is the entrance to the city club. Past the roadway, you have additional buffer, and past that, you have the city club fairway. Uh, in the earlier discussions, uh, the home is cited a little bit differently. Um, and I had offered uh, to try to get unanimous support to the city club at that point a buffer, uh, a tree buffer, to, and we were not able to agree on the uh, circumference of the trees that would be included in that tree buffer. Uh, in addition, the, the city club had requested, uh, and we could not finalize the agreement, they had requested restrictions uh, based on U.S. Coast Guard and geodetic uh, 1992 adjusted mean sea level height restrictions they had requested uh, uh, restrictions to the northern parcel, which is not part of the zoning request, um, 
and currently has no restrictions on it. They had requested additional building and color material restrictions in addition to those imposed by Atlanta National uh, HOA and those in the city. Uh, so there were several additional conditions that uh, no longer made it feasible to, to come to an agreement. Um, so at this time, I, I would like to withdraw the uh, or to delete uh, item 2E in the condition, which was the offer for the buffer. It, it no longer seems uh, necessary as there's uh, more than significant buffer and distance uh, from the proposed home site to uh, the City Club Fairway. Um, and there are uh, several other homes that currently exist that can be seen uh, from the City Club from their, from their roadway uh, currently, so mine would not be the, the first time that, that is visible. Um, there is a, uh, so that's why I'm uh, requesting that the, the reduction of the build line from 100 feet to, to 40 feet to allow the home to be built. Um, a future modification on the east property line, however, may also be necessary based on a change in interpretation of the location of the front of the property. Uh, initially, it was determined by staff that even as uh, this may be a odd-shaped flag lot, the front of the property could be the same as the existing homes on, on Crooked Stick. And that's, if you go on the lot, there's a natural way that the driveway goes to the front of the home. It's consistent with the other homes on the street. There was an assumption, and the staff had originally thought that that would be um, the front of the home. Um, additional review and analysis of, by the staff uh, uh, brought this initial site confirmation into question from a technical interpretation and now has resulted in the front of the home being located in a different alignment with the existing homes and to the east of the property. What that does is it adds an additional 35 feet of setback from the front rather than the side of the home. Um, I do not know at this time if, if it will be required to yet uh, request an additional modification um, as the site plan is still being modified and the building is being modified. Uh, so it was the recommendation of staff uh, that until I know uh, the final details that per perhaps we table that portion of it and for now proceed with the request to remove the uh, or reduce the, the setback lines to 40 feet from 100 feet. Um, and then, if it's necessary, at a, at a future time to see if additional um, modification is required. Uh, I discussed those modification, uh, additional modification requirements with the existing homeowner uh, and with the uh, Atlanta National uh, representatives, and uh, they're fine should additional uh, uh, modification be required at, at a later date. Um, I'll reserve some, some time um, uh, to see if there are uh, any other questions. Um, but I'm requesting the City Council support me in, in uh, granting this uh, modification. Okay. Do we have uh, any other? Yes, sir. Comments? We have Ken Benson. Mayor and Council, thank you. <coughs> <clears throat> My name is Ken Benson, and I'm uh, the vice president of the States and National Homeowners Association. I'm just, I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, John Crackmeyer, our president, wanted to be here. He's out of town. But I would just like to let you know that we fully support this. Uh, we've had several issues like this in the neighborhood previously, which were modified. Uh, I think this is a very reasonable request. Uh, it allows him to build a very nice home, uh, and um, if you have any other questions of me, I'd be happy to entertain, but we do fully support it without any restrictions. Okay. Do we have any other public comments? No, sir. Okay. Then I'll uh, close the public hearing and uh, open it up to questions uh, from the council, either to the applicant or any confirmation with staff. Karen? I just want a clarification from staff. What is the front yard in this, <laughs> on this lot of me? The front yard is the eastern property line. Um, as, it, as it's shown in that longest section along the buildable area. So it would be, and I can't, let me kind of back up so that I can read the number and I'll give you the length. 
it's that portion that would be 346.79 feet in length. <coughs> And that's based on consistent interpretation of the front yard for what is considered a flag lot. This one, it, it kind of skirts the edge of is it really a flag lot or is it not, but it's close enough. I think that uh, we erred on the side of caution with that. Simply because the width of that flag is a little bit wider than what we normally get. <laughs> yeah, this one, I could see where it's tough call. Any other questions? It Joe? Is this the way the homeowner wanted everything to work out, or have we thus far? Yes, sir. nudged him a little <laughs> in any direction? Um, as far as nudged him, uh, I think that uh, that he's concerned that the house may yet move on the lot. But again, we so can't. these setbacks give him the flexibility that he needs. Hopefully, uh, okay. that's the intent. Um, again, if he needs more, he'll have to come back. Uh, we hope that he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the applicant recommended um, uh, removal of the condition 2E. What is staff's opinion of that? Well, um, Ronald, could you flip back to that picture of the barn? The buffer is really um, to protect any view from the golf course or the golf uh, facilities to the houses that would be beyond. Um, in this particular case, uh, the golf path is just before the berm you see there in the picture. Um, the maintenance uh, roadway for the maintenance vehicles is just the other side of that berm. Would another 30 feet of um, trees help it or hurt it? I don't know that it's going to do either in this particular case. I, uh, most of the trees that are there will stay. You know, he'll clear out enough for his, his drive. but. Um, I don't know that I, I could recommend either way. It was offered by the applicant, and in this particular case, it's one of those that's probably no harm, no foul. Okay. Any other questions? Bill? Just a clarification. Uh, did I understand you to say that the front yard uh, or the front of the house would be uh, facing the east? Now the front of the house actually faces kind of southeast. Right. It's, it's kind of I see here. catty corner on the lot. I think but we call the front yard for the setback purposes would be along that one yeah, property line. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why it may have to come back, which would really be kind of form over substance as I... It's all said the house is not going to actually front that way, correct? But you may have, there may be a requirement if it's defined as the front yard for a greater distance between that building which is right now being considered a side yard and it becomes a front yard. Is that? Uh, no, I, I think he would be still fine within that. Uh, within the, that within what's within there. there. Okay, great. We'll just have to go there and look and see what the front door is. <laughs> All done. See which is the front okay. yard. But front I understand. Front door doesn't matter. But I understand where you're coming from as yeah. far as your setback. So, okay, is there any other questions? Julie, yeah, your question. question? Um, and I know, Mr. Fight, that you had mentioned that you had been in discussions with the City Club, and um, I know that myself and others may have received a letter from them. Um, when you guys were still in negotiation, they were obviously still talking about the buffer. Um, I realize that your request tonight is to remove that buffer in its entirety. Um, right now it says an undisturbed buffer, which wouldn't allow um, any disturbance of that buffer. Um, I think I heard you say that your intent was obviously not to clear cut that. Um, would, there, would there be something where you could consider a 30 foot or some sort of a, just a natural buffer, which speaks to what you're planning to do anyway, but remove the undisturbed? Buffer. I, I just wonder. I know that there had been some discussion on your part in terms of what you were comfortable with, because obviously you don't want to see that roadway. Uh, yeah. The um, uh, what uh, we had initially intended. Yeah, uh, both parties had never intended to be a completely undisturbed buffer. The, right. the intent of both parties uh, initially, uh, before the site was actually moved, was to have either a 10 or a 15 inch tree circumference limitation. I argue that it should be consistent with the City of Milton um, tree ordinance um, uh, as a way to just uh, gain uh, unanimous uh, support. Um, after being on the lot again and with the, the arborist, um, uh, it pretty, pretty much uh, is clear if you're on the lot that there's really no need for an additional buffer or to, to add those uh, additional conditions. Um, 
I would like to point out, if I may, that uh, when the initial application was made uh, to the city, uh, I was under the assumption uh, in talking with staff that the front of the property would be the southernmost portion in alignment with the other homes. Otherwise, I would have, uh, at that point, had requested, uh, you know, modification of that as well. It was only after the application was already filed with the city that I learned uh, from additional analysis by the staff that because of the way the regulations were interpreted, that now the front of the home may actually be on the eastern side, which has another 35 feet. I had not anticipated that, or I would have filed for that one time. So just want to make that point of clarification. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Staff for the open? Okay. I'll uh, open this up to a, a motion. Mayor, I move to approve agenda item ZM11-01, requested by Charles Fight, located at lot number 9, Atlanta National Subdivision, Crooked Stick Drive, to modify condition 1E, RZ85-181, to reduce 100-foot building setback along the south property lines including the southwest property line defined as north 59 degrees, 45 minutes, 11 seconds west for a distance of 78 feet to a 40-foot building setback and to reduce the 100-foot building setback along the west property line to a 40-foot building setback. Property having frontage on the south side of Crooked Stick Drive in the second district, second section and land lot 806 in Fulton County City of Milton, Georgia. I'll second it. Okay. Got a, uh, have a motion by Councilmember Lust, second by Councilmember Thurman. Is there any discussion from Council? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? That's unanimous. Good luck with your, with your home. Glad to have you here in Milton. All right, will the City Clerk please sound the next item? The next item, which was moved by motion and vote on the agenda, is RZ 10-08 to amend the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance, Section 64-1, Definition for Landscaping Business. This is agenda item number 10, 1301. First presentation on December 6, 2010. Previously discussed at special called work session on December 20th, 2010. Deferred at the December 20th council meeting. December 20th, 2010, discussed at March 14th, 2011, work session. Ms. Len Tully. Uh, this definition uh, has been discussed several times, um, and we have included the changes from the last planning commission as well as um, those things that were recommended during work session. The definition is to be is recommended as follows. Landscape business means a business providing the services described herein at off-site locations, period. While most of the actual landscape activity occurs off-site, the business owner's property may be approved for equipment storage, parking, material storage, and a building or buildings for storage and plant propagation. Landscape businesses typically include activities such as lawn installation, mowing and maintenance, fertilization, and or insecticide treatment, the planting and maintenance of trees, shrubs, and flowers, tree and stump removal, the spreading and grading of topsoil, mulch, or other ground covers, the installation of stone, brick, and blocks, walkways, and stone walls, and the temporary storage of plant trimmings. This is the definition as recommended by the Planning Commission. Are there any questions? Any questions for staff? Okay. Go ahead, Julie. Um, just comparing this definition to the prior definition, I know that one of the terms that was used previously was certain of them had the word limited within them. In other words, that some of these components might be limited, you know, that they might be ancillary, but that there was some limitation. And I just wonder if we wouldn't want to consider that word when we consider this. Um, and then the other question, this may be a question for Mr. Gerard, is that while some of these things in totality might be part of this definition, could any one singular of these become a business operating under this definition? 
In other words, could it become just a tree removal business? Because some of those individual components, if it was the entirety, could take on a different meaning and a different intensity of use if it was a, a subset of this. I don't know if my question is clear. I hope well, I understand it is. exactly what you're saying. You're saying does, <clears throat> if we adopt this definition, does it have to be an amalgamation of some of all of these uses or at least more than one, mm -hmm. or could it be exclusively one? And as an example, one that I'll bring up is fertilization and or insecticide treatment, just as an example. In the other documents that we have, it indicates that there will be no bulk storage of those sorts of materials because they're combustible and they do provide or present a public hazard. Um, and if, so I think that some of that gets a bit complicated unless we can clarify that no one singular component of this would necessarily meet the definition. But under 9, it says storage of landscape materials in the property may be permitted in limited quantities. So that would tell me that we're already limiting it in under 9. Yes, the intent is that the limitations would be found in the conditions. <sighs> As they're recommended. I can, I can answer your question. I'd like to hear Kelly's thought on it as well. But I can tell you that the way that definition is framed right there, <clears throat> since it does not expressly say that, that you have to have more than one of these, I would construe it to mean that, that having just one could satisfy the definition. So that it could be exclusively a pesticide company that would locate under the definition of a landscape and business. Yes, that's the way I would construe it. Lawn care company yeah, as well. Care. Could be a could actually be Kim a pesticide. Green. It could be arrow exterminators, not a landscaping business. And I guess the purpose of my question is that one of those singular entities moves further and further away from an agricultural business, in particular when you start to discuss things like pesticides and storage of pesticides. Um, and so that seems to me to be a little bit counterintuitive if the intent is to have limited, and yet if one singular entity from that definition could solely meet the definition, it strikes me as needing a little bit more clarity. Unless some of those other commercial businesses suddenly are agriculture, I just don't think a pesticide business, as an example, fits the intent of what was put forward. Bill? Um, <clears throat> Landscape businesses typically include activities such as, and in each one of those clauses, uh, there's a verb. Uh, going down to the uh, third to the last line there is clause shrubs and flowers. There's no verb in, in that clause. Wouldn't it be the planning and maintenance of Tree shrubs and flowers. Instead of a semicolon, yeah. it should semicolon. be a comma. Take the semicolon, comma, and comma in there. Put a comma, Make a comma. in there between yeah. tree yeah. and shrubs. Okay. Give it a little dot above it. And uh, installation of stone uh, should be a comma. Brick and block walkways and yes, stone walls. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. And there are other types of, uh, I guess, re uh, stone walls refer to uh, retaining walls of some sort. And there are other materials used in retaining walls. Yes, sir. We could, we could simply re say retain retaining walls, walls, whether they be timber or stone or brick. Okay. Along that same vein, would there not also need to be a semicolon before the last and? Oh, this is just a mess. Uh, the last and, and um, right before and, the temporary storage of plant trimmings. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll get our uh, grammar check out next time. <laughs> Don't feel bad. If I wrote it, they would really pick it apart. <laughs> Did you write this, Jeff? No. <laughs> this looks way too good for me. Uh, but, Mr. Gerard, could you just as a point of clarity, just the earlier question, would you have any suggestion for how to, or Lynn, if you would? I think the question you're, you're saying, you know, for singular use, and, and one example would be an exterminator As a might come in. Thing. I'd like to just see what, Mr. Gerard or, or Lynn, what's your take on that? Is that, would that be possible, or is that, would we be covered on that? 
The answer is the answer is yes. The, the answer is, is could you do it that way? The answer is yes. Should you is of course your all's decision. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do something like that, then you would perhaps in the first line landscape business means a business providing no less than three of the services described below. So, you know, if, if your objective is to try and make sure that they can't just be exclusively one, then make them have to provide or, two or three. Or could you word it somewhere, you know, let's say it's a, a landscape business that does the treatment of the yards for pests and the fertilizer and all that. They're just, could you have a definition, something about it? It has to be done to the ground or you know, it's, not, it's not a structure. It's not a, it doesn't serve as structures or interiors that, or something right, like so that. So that doesn't get misconstrued as something that's not intended within it. The point being that there's other I'd, commercial I'd, businesses that could. I'd rather see that happen than to say you got to have two out of three or three mm -hmm. or four, you know, with somebody's business, but have a clause where it, it clarifies that this is meant for, um, you know, out of lawns and earth rather than structures. Mm -hmm. So is the only exception that, that you guys see, would that be um, in reference to the insecticide treatment? Why don't you just add, in, it said typically in, include outdoor activities such as, and that way, because all of these are actually outdoor type. Okay. And, and to um, Council Member Tart's question, I just use that as one example. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that one other example that I know we've heard from citizens in the past when applications um, of this sort have come forward and others that have said if this were to change what about is that I, I don't think the intent of this was to allow for the creation of a um, rock quarry sort of um, business where it became primarily mm -hmm. the building of and the construction of the walkways without the other and so, I mean I think that that does potentially present something that was other than what this was intended as being. Um, again, the intent of this, I think, as I understand the Planning Commission's discussion, was to have it that which was more agriculturally focused as opposed to construction based. And so again, I just, I just highlight that knowing that there could be the risk of misuse of the term. I think with the change of semicolons to commas under installation of stone, brick, and block walkways and retaining walls, I think that'll capture that, that it couldn't and be limit that so that it's not any sort of quarry or um, you would, you no, would still be come scoring us you would have if to if someone install. were trying to right to, uh, I'm sorry sir if someone were an applicant were trying to have that business it would still come before us obviously we'd have that decision you know if it yeah it'd come before the, or, the staff yeah, mm -hmm. or, or yeah if it were quarry, I think that's a whole like that other too, so. land use yeah Okay. And that's the point, is yeah. to just make sure that it's not setting the stage for misuse of terms. Okay. Um, do we have any public comment on this? No, sir, we do not. Okay. Um, I'll close the public hearing and then, again, either open the floor for a motion or any other questions or, or uh, comments from council. Uh, how, how do we, we Jeff? Yeah, how do we go about if we wanted to start trying to figure out, you know, how much of one service does this uh, organization provide versus another? How, how would we enforce that? Are we going to look at their invoices and check to see that they're billing for things other than uh, pesticide applications to the yard? I mean, we're, we're trusting these citizens to do what they say they're doing. And so, you know, we can put a lot of words in here and it's, we're just making more work for ourselves to try to figure out if it's, if it's actually going on. I mean, if, if there's problems because the business isn't what it says it is, I think that's that's a whole different story to to uh, Council Member Bailey's point. I mean, we got to have other ways of managing those kind of issues. If if they're not operating as a real landscaping business, that's a different thing. Yes, sir. I don't expect that we'd be proactively going out yeah. to. Yeah. I didn't think so either. <laughs> But if the question does come up, we have at least that in the definitions. To yeah, and, us. you know, the storage of certain materials doesn't prove that you're doing anything other than storing materials on site. And the lack of storing those materials doesn't prove that you're not doing those businesses. It may just be that you don't need to store any of it. So they could still be conducting, you know, just basically a pesticide service, and you wouldn't know it because there's nothing around that proves it. 
So uh, I think that's difficult to, to deal with. Yeah, I mean, you're, uh, this, you know, you open up everything you try to change, you do open up a what if and a can of worms. We can always go back to not to not changing our definition at all if we didn't want to. So, um, Code enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Julie. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to clarify, during the agenda we had switched and we're now looking at Z1008, correct? Just the yes, definition? Correct, definition. Um, and just to clarify also, under item three, where it talks about state of the arterial and minor collector streets, can we just clarify or could staff clarify that the map that was attached, I guess, in the earlier item, uses those same terms? That's on yes, ma'am, that's, that's on correct. The, even though that's the earlier item, it still is referencing arterial and minor collector roads. The map references minor arterial and collector roads. So if we don't need to address it here, I just want to make sure that we're using consistent terms. And I think currently they are inconsistent. And I think the point is, is that these are not intended for all roadways. And so I think it should say that they are stated not art, but that it should be a minor arterial. That's not part of the, well, this one we're looking at now. Yeah. Though, no, it's it? not. That's part of the next agenda item. The next agenda item, that's fine. Well, we can discuss that one okay. on the next. And this is why I was asking the question in terms of which item in totality that we're looking at now, that it's just the definition. Just the definition. On page one under 64-1. Yes, ma'am. Alan? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Thank you. Um, Make a motion to approve agenda item 10-1301 to amend the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance Section 64-1 uh, Definition of Landscaping Business um, to be um, in concert with the City Attorney's recommended edits with the Planning Commission's final recommendations from the January 25th, 11th meeting and City Council work session on March 14, 2011, I'm looking at the clean copy that was in our packet um, with the following changes. Uh, on line number five, in between the words include and activities, insert the word outdoor. On line six, um, in between the words trees and shrubs, insert a comma. On line eight, in between the word stone and brick, take out the semicolon, add a comma, and in between stone walls and the word and, insert a semicolon. I'll second that. Um, um, did we want to talk about, does Councilmember Tart, uh, retaining walls instead of just stone walls? So that would make it more inclusive. inclusive. Would, I don't know if you'd be Change open for that, Councilmember Tart. We withdraw your motion. Your second. I will draw it. Yes. Yeah, th thank you. Okay. And so, um, in addition to what I just said, in place of stone walls on line eight, we would we would change that to retaining walls. And I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? Yes. yes. Councilmember Lusk. <coughs> We're talking about uh, as part of this motion to approve the recommended edits uh, with the Planning Commission's final recommendations, which is detailed in the other zoning agenda item here. Uh, I, I, I think it bears a little discussion in reviewing these. Uh, so. Are the are the um, Planning Commission's final recommendations included in this definition here? Yes, sir. The one that I read mm -hmm. in the record? So, Council Member Lusk, what? Uh, and I, what did you, I presume that um, these edits are included on uh, page two of the Planning Commission's action minutes, They're highlighted in yellow. Is that correct? Let me double check myself. I'm not sure I follow. Are you, are you, uh, how does this relate to the definition? Well, that's 
does apparently. RC 10-08, motion was made by Paul Moore, seconded by Joe Kramer to approve the amended definition for landscape business with the recommended changes as discussed. Motion was approved six to one. And those changes are in this definition that yes, is before us. Well, wait okay. a minute. In, in item number two, it goes on to say, or to delete landscape businesses from the AG1 Agricultural District. I don't know that, that right now. I'm reading the wrong one here. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know that that affects the definition. Yeah, it just affects right. the zoning. So is that comment included in the new definition? In no, sir. That would the definition would stand alone, whether or not you include it in C1 or AG1 or. That's what Especially we're considering next, right? That's okay. correct. That's, that's in the other agenda. Yes, okay. I'm so sorry, this one's confusing. It's been back and forth <laughs> several times. So. And believe me, I'm trying to really stir it up here. <laughs> <laughs> you are causing trouble tonight. Uh, I tell you. So the uh, one amendment that's coming out of Planning Commission is uh, RZ 10-08, the third comment that's highlighted in yellow. That applies to the agenda item that we're talking about now, the, uh, the definition. Is that correct? Third comment. Motion made by Paul Moore. And yes, sir. That, that's Kramer. the item. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, again, what's okay. before us right now is just the definition. It's correct. not yes, which sir. zoning category it stands within, correct? Yeah. Right. Correct. But this uh, uh, zoning agenda item includes uh, the recommended edits uh, with the final planning commission final recommendations. So as a point I just wanted to clarify that. So now I'm confused. As a point of order, <laughs> can we verify that the motion that's currently on the table, not been tabled, but that's on the table for a vote, um, is primarily just the definition and that the reference that Councilmember Tart made to including the planning commission's comments and recommendations does not mean that we're not going to now have a second discussion on the first item that was reversed on the agenda. It's, this is still solely just the definition, the definition, and any of the other commentary of the Planning Commission is not what we're voting on under this item. Wow. Yes. Is that correct? I, I think I followed that, yeah. and yes. It is correct. The motion by the maker stands. stands yeah, I think that Mr. Right. Tar just on this made definition. a point about that this is inclusive, but that was meant as a general comment, not to specifically that's reference. The, yeah, that's the, the title of the, the, the document that we have in front of us that is that articulates the definition that, Thank that I put forward the motion on. All right. And Mr. Mayor, before you all vote, I just want to confirm we had a little bit of concern here that it was, we were working on RZ 1008. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay. All right, got a motion and a second. I think we're clear. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Okay, will the city clerk please send the next item? The next and final <laughs> agenda item is RZ 10 06 to amend the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance, Section 64 1820, Landscaping Business, Plant Nursery, or Garden Center with Indoor Retail Component. This is agenda item number 10 1300. First presentation was on December 6, 2010. Previously discussed at special called work session December 20th, 2010. Deferred at December 20th, a regular council meeting. Discussed at March 14th, 2011, work session. Ms. Lynn Tully. All right. Um, again, trying not to muddy the waters here. These are the conditions by which a land use permit um, would be approved uh, as a special use permit. So. Uh, among these uh, are a variety of conditions, which, again, we have talked about um, quite a bit over the last several months. In addition to those, I want to uh, mention the things that we have uh, changed and addressed. The first is the definition for a commercial vehicle, which will go before the Planning Commission at their next meeting, um, along with several other definitions. Uh, but this proposed definition for commercial vehicle <coughs> includes any vehicle or equipment which has two or more of the following characteristics. And it goes on to list a variety of commercial type uh, vehicle characteristics, including gross vehicle weight rating, um, 
regularly used in the conduct of a business, commerce, profession, or trade, exceeding seven feet in height from the base of the vehicle to the top or 20 feet in length, has more than two axles, has more than four tires in contract with, contact with the ground, designed to carry more than eight passengers to sell food or merchandise directly from the vehicle or trailer itself, and or bears signs, logos, or markings identifying the owner or registrant to trade a business, service, or commodity. And then it lists specifically several commercial vehicles so that we can be very clear. It, like, again. Just in case. Just in case. You know, two or more of those characteristics I listed, as well as um, step vans, box trucks, flatbed or stake bed trucks, buses, semi-trailers, tractor trailers, dump trucks, wreckers, and trailers used for commercial purposes. The following types of equipment shall all but also be considered commercial vehicles, earth moving equipment, cement mixers, trenching, pipe laying equipment, or other similar type of construction equipment. So we have, we have tried to hit it all there. <laughs> and I applaud Robin for digging valiantly to find a definition that would include all of them. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Um, again, those definitions will come back to you as part of definitions changes uh, approved by the Planning Commission, I anticipate, after the next Planning Commission meeting. Um, number two, we did uh, modify to include shorter hours of operation. 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. This would be based on the current noise control ordinance for construction activity or commercial lawn maintenance. So again, now those things are in concert with the special use permit considerations. And the third would that was um, the identification of minor, again to um, Ms. Bailey's point, minor arterial and minor collector streets that are depicted in the city of Milton transportation plan inventory of existing conditions report map 5 dated April 2009 so it simply calls out the exact map that we will use so that we can consistently apply how these streets are classified uh, when addressing a permit request. Those are the changes that we have made. Again they are reflected in the clean copy of the recommended edits and chairman's input and mayor and city council suggestions from work session on 314. I know this one has been very difficult and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, let's open up questions for uh, our staff. Anyone want to start? Julie? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll just start with a question now tied to the definition of commercial vehicles. Um, obviously, a lot of the discussion, both at the Planning Commission as well as amongst this body um, at our work sessions, had to do with this whole question of intensity of use. Um, it does, it causes me pause when I look at it, that some of these businesses on AG1 land could be tractor trailers, that we could have tractor trailers and dump trucks. And I think when we've heard from citizens, their concern was that if we are going to be talking about a business that is more commercial in nature and less agricultural in nature, um, that it, it starts to move more towards a commercially zoned sort of business. Um, to me, and that's why I think the commercial vehicle definitions are so important. I, I just struggle with if the definition now says that up to two commercial vehicles um, can be on site and those can include tractor trailers, buses, I think that starts to move us away from agricultural use. Um, is it, and I realize that you're saying that the definitions are going to separately go to the Planning Commission, um, but if we proceed with what was before us tonight, we're proceeding with no definition of what those commercial uses would be. So I guess where that takes me is that it's one thing to have a global definition of commercial uses. It's another to say that those commercial uses in totality would be okay on AG1 land. I cannot. I'll just say the citizens that we continue to hear from and have heard from previously noted concern about intensity of use, and I think buses and tractor trailers speak to their concerns. Do you have any suggestions for how we could ensure that we're not walking down a path of allowing more commercial-like businesses on AG1 land? Well, AG1 land is the lowest common denominator for land in Milton. So, I mean, we've got people who've owned property that operate a business, use their home address as the business address, drive to work in their tractor trailer truck or whatever, don't really conduct business on site, but they have to have their vehicle there. Oh, and there's 
ten thousand other examples like that. So have we can't focus on the fact that it's AG one land because AG one my properties on you know or residential properties on AG one land right now regular res Some residential. Is. So. I know the tractor. I don't mean to. No, no. I'm just saying that that using AG1 and saying this is really commercial use. It shouldn't be on AG1. AG1 is all over the place. It's used for all kinds of different purposes. Is the problem? But today, that I mean, I think that that was the whole intent of trying to better define this was not to say, oh, let's let make sure that any commercial business can operate on AG1. It was instead to say which businesses are okay on AG1 and under what constraints. Um, I, I, I I'm concerned that what I hear is that and I don't want to misinterpret, I hope I'm not hearing you say that any business should be able to operate regardless of activity. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, oh, okay, I'll let you finish. Sorry. And I don't know, and Lynn, maybe you can clarify, are tractor trailers and buses allowed on any property that operated business? I think that there if are. You're, if you're zone C1. If you're zoned C1, yeah. but on AG1 land, I don't think that anybody can have tractor trailers. I see tractors and trailers and um, school buses on. Yeah, I would property. wonder, you know, if someone had the AG had a farm, yeah, wouldn't they be allowed it's to? It's possible that they're they there. had a truck or, you know, yeah. drove a I don't know that tractor there's trailer or something. That I would says that they can't be there. Be parked there. Use it for storage facilities. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we always have the option too. Not changing, you know, I don't know if we're old. Will be but I think Alan you had a well my it seems like the Planning Commission and staff have seen a noted an, an, an issue or a potential change that needs to be made with the commercial vehicle definition which I'm just wondering if we're putting the, the cart before the horse and changing the the landscaping business definition if we've already noted that there could be issues with the definition of commercial vehicle definition so I'm wondering if um, perhaps a, a deferral of this one, the one that we're considering today, would be in order to first fix the commercial vehicle definition and then to consider the landscaping business definition. Or not. I'm just throwing that out there. You could absolutely do that. Um, I don't know that it's going to affect the existing landscaping business that are, you know, that are working today. Um, the existing legal landscaping businesses that are working today. Um, but absolutely you could do that. The earliest you would see this come back to you at that point then would be um, July, August, August. July. Karen, you have a... Yeah, I've got July. a quick question. July. All this does is set up the bare minimum. So at any time that we approved a use permit, we could put whatever restrictions on it we wanted That's to minimum. put on there, including not allowing tractor trailers or only allowing them for delivery or anything else. This is just, this isn't meant to be an end all to everything that automatically gets approved, but this just allows us to not approve stuff if it doesn't meet these without a variance and we can put whatever conditions on it we want to at a later time, correct? Yes, ma'am. I'm understanding too, the Planning Commission, they've, they've, you know, they're kind of submitting it to us and don't, you know, Yes, we'll look at it. <laughs> yeah, they're submitting it to you, and they have they were fairly divided yeah. as well. So, yeah. um, but on the commercial vehicles, sorry. they they had not. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry. That, uh, that on the commercial vehicles, and again, I think the point that's being made, and I guess I'm I'm struggling with that because of the citizens that we hear from, is that there is a concern, and if it goes forward without that commercial vehicle definition, or with one that's been presented here is that effectively it would say that any of those could come forward with these with two of these commercial vehicles included. And while you can always further restrict, again, I, I think that the intent with most of how we proceed with the ordinances um, is, is to be cautious about the unintended consequences. Because this are, is still more we, restrictive than what we, 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 have. we have. So this is better, and if we, you know, tighten it up later on with the commercial vehicle definition, that just makes that even tighter. But this is still better than what is currently on our books, correct? It is definitely more stringent. Yes, stringent. Yeah, yeah. Better. better. <laughs> more stringent, well. Um, you know, so and again, we, we have it. options of deferring. Um, <clears throat> You know, uh, approving or, or denying this, and we have 
gone on a long time and a lot of staff time and planning commission and uh, as well as ours. So I'd like to at least make a decision tonight, uh, one way or the other, and uh, go back to the old or, you know, we want to. Mayor, Somebody wants to make a motion and make a change, you know. I do have, have I do have one question for staff. Um, and I know you wanted us to look at the clean copy, but I'm comparing the marked up copy with the clean copy. And I, just want, off. I want clarification on okay. um, item seven and eight. Item seven and eight um, refer to the hours of operation. And it's seven on the clean copy, and those two don't match. And I, I just want to know what, what the, what it is that we're, what it is that's being recommended. Seven and eight on the marked up copy include hours of operation and vendor material deliveries occurring between the hours of 7:30 and a.m. and 7:30 p.m. But they're they're listed as seven and eight in the marked up copy, but it's just seven in the clean copy. Oh, and the hours are different. We combined them, trying to make that a little bit yeah. more yeah. understandable. Yeah. If that's yeah. not so, what the clean copy is more accurate. Yes, sir. Okay. Because Bill, so the hours would go Monday through Friday, seven thirty to seven thirty, and then nine to six on Saturdays, and close on yes, Sundays. Okay. Bill, uh, in addition to that last point, Alan. Uh, where does it state uh, that they're closed on Sunday? It doesn't give any hours of operation for Sundays. The inference there so is that there are no. To <laughs> or it's wide open. I guess the bottom line would be concurrent with our noise ordinance, correct? Right. Okay. So the intent was to be the same uh, as the noise ordinance. Article 6, uh, in the interest of consistency and in getting into the minutiae tonight, uh, on the fourth line down, commercial vehicles used for the landscaping landscaping business. I guess in the interest of consistency should be a landscape business. Since the title of the article is landscape business. And where are you, number six, you said? Uh, article six. In the marked up. Okay. It's a maximum of two commercial vehicles used for the landscaping okay. business. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found it. Thank you. Then uh, going into commercial vehicles, uh, it's like Karen, uh, Mayor, said that we can uh, change the uh, or approve any of the conditions here that want application time. But going down to the, uh, the final paragraph there where it lists a bunch of equipment, it says cement mixers. Uh, I'm going to change that. Concrete or mortar mixers. <laughs> I didn't know we mixed cement. Yeah. Cement's an ingredient. Yeah. That's what the average person calls it. Cement truck. Yeah, I wouldn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, That's why we I have you up here, Bill. I've always called it cement. <laughs> <laughs> Cement is to concrete as flour is to cake. That's true. All right. Uh, then you? If we were to approve this uh, amended uh, ordinance, uh, would it include also include the Planning Commission's uh, recommendation? Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. Sorry. It does in our, our, our marked up version does include the planning commission recommendations as we have discussed them in pre our previous work session, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, going With the to additions those of the work session we had on March. Bye. Okay. Going to those uh, recommendations, the second paragraph under RZ 1006, it's on page two of their recommendation. Mm -hmm. It gives the option, or recommends the option, of going with either the city attorney's recommendations or deleting landscape businesses from AG1. Yes, sir, that was their original recommendation, to do one or the other. OK. 
okay, if, how would we, uh, so we're also uh, voting on which option to take in this uh, ordinance? Yes, you would direct me to either approve the changes as shown here mm -hmm. or to remove it entirely from C1 or from AG1. From AG1. And I believe, was there some just at that time? Yeah, we delete that, that use permit from that section. Didn't we discuss that in the meeting and some yeah. plan, planning commission members were here which weren't necessarily in favor of deleting it entirely from A? Well, they were AG1. split on it. Oh, so. split? Okay. Mm -hmm. But at that work session, we directed staff to come back with with the way it is presented now. Yes, ma'am. Without the recommendations from the planning commission. Well, the recommendations are included there, and you can you can follow those, or you can include the newly written landscape business special use permit <coughs> section. But if you choose to remove it, you can remove it at this time too. I don't know if I'm clear on that. Then are we? Do we need to make a decision, either or? They were mutually exclusive yeah. recommendations. Mm -hmm. and you, they're not our money. You can either do one or the other. It seemed to me to reflect, you know, some of the same discussion this council is having. Right. Yeah. As I read it, their recommendation was to do one or the other. Correct. And, and that's, that's why at the work happen. session we discussed both of them yeah. and decided to go with this recommendation because obviously you can't go with both. Just, I think what I hear. <laughs> so, so to uh, state a motion on, on this uh, change, it should also uh, define which of the two recommendations should be approved by the Planning Commission. Or it could just state as my, written here. My respectful right. suggestion to you would be that if you approve what's in your book and you have implicitly, if not expressly, rejected the other recommendation. Which was to <laughs> delete yes. landscape. Okay. okay. That's what I was So, okay. All right, Julie. A um, couple, just going back to the um, details of, on page one and two. Um, Looking at on page two, item four, I get, it's hard to tell on some of this in the marked up copy, so I apologize if I'm misguided. Um, actually, item number four, where it talks about all use areas, storage areas, and dumpsters, the location of dumpsters, and it just says that they shall be located 75 feet from the adjoining residential district. A, a concern I have is that this doesn't preclude them from being at the front of a property. So in other words, I could be have an agricultural piece of property, and as long as I was 75 feet from another piece of property, that dumpster could be at the front of the property? No, no, ma'am. It would still have to be at the rear of the property. Does it say that? It says that in the overlay districts. Could, for purposes of clarity, would it be reasonable to say that it should be at the back? And I think we're just aware that there are some instances where they're not at the back, and there's been some... Um, I think question as to where those are allowable or not. We can restate it, but we'd be restating it here and there. It's, it's just mm -hmm. so you believe it is expressly stated that a dumpster shall not be in the front door. <coughs> God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I would just ask because we've had some instances where that's been <coughs> unclear that it might not hurt to clarify. Um, another question I had is under item number 11 where it says the on-site bulk storage of gasoline, diesel fuel, other petroleum products, fertilizers, insecticides is prohibited. Um, where do we define bulk storage? And I'm curious as to where we delineate between limited and bulk. And again, it's, it is a public safety issue, and there's obviously some state law out there, and there's some fire marshal discussions about that. I just don't see the distinction between limited and bulk. Um, we had that discussion during planning commission as well, and the the distinction came as to whether or not it was in individual packages, unbroken, <laughs> versus, again, loose or um, uh, large containers. Like I said, individual packages is what, that's how they defined it loosely. That, that's what they were thinking in their minds. And that was, again, it's not something that's expressly defined in our definition section, but that's how they saw it. I, I would just ask, 
and, and maybe you and or our city attorney might have some um, some idea about that because it is a public safety hazard um, and, and if we don't define it well because as an example based on what you were just saying I could have I could have 5,000 square feet of a building filled with fertilizer and pesticide and as long as it's in individual packages I could indicate that it's not in bulk um, and yet that would I think go beyond the intent of limited um, fertilizer and pesticide. The reason for the question is that there is a legitimate public safety health issue and also with gasoline. I mean, it's not just fertilizer. I think this bears some additional delineation um, and I would just ask you both how we would get there so that we don't end up with an unintended consequence. And let me, let me just offer a preliminary what I would think would be this is, this is a guide, guidepost for how you actually would handle one of these applications coming in front of you and depending upon what the actual use was going to be you could then tailor conditions. Um, you clearly place the applicant on notice of what's not going to be authorized. You clearly said you know, we're not going to be allowed these bulk storage these materials. Now Lynn has an actual application in front of her and she can come to you and report here's what they're going to have, here's what the applicant thinks they reasonably may have on site and you may say well then I'd like as a condition you shall have no more than X capacity of this substance on your property. Because now we know what we're talking about. We know, we know specifically what sort of material you may have. It may be gasoline with you. This applicant, it may be pesticide or fertilizer, and hopefully Lynn and with staff can work together and say, we think no more than this you know, gross pounds of, of this fertilizer is allowed. I mean, that's the way I would view it. And I appreciate that input. I guess my, my dilemma, is, and it goes back to the statement or the question that um, Councilmember Longoria asked, and that was, do we really want to be in the business of each of one of these going out and saying, well, do you have this much or that? And because we've said that under the definition of landscaping business, it could be an amalgamy of these, it could be a combination of these things, it would seem to me better to at least set some sort of distinction between limited and bulk in order to address that fire safety hazard um, issue. And so I don't know if, you know, if, if we could think about what, what size gets beyond limited. My, my problem would simply be trying to delineate in this code, you know, how much gasoline turns into a bulk, you know, holding the capacity of gasoline. I, I don't know. And, I, and, and I'll just say that my concern is that if we, again, you know, yes, can we always impose different conditions? We can. But sometimes, depending on the night, depending on the number mm -hmm. of cases, sometimes the level of detail in those discussions doesn't always get back to the intent. And so I do think that there's, there's the risk that that would be something that just mistakenly or unintentionally gets left out. And I think because of the public safety issue, it's something that we shouldn't leave to chance. And so I, I bring it up for your consideration because it does concern me that there's not a delineation between limited and bulk as it relates to gas and fertilizer and pesticide. Yeah, and I think that's, that's probably real important input uh, the, the thing that I the way I read all of this stuff is if we're prohibiting the on-site storage of bulk uh, uh, components such as are listed here we, we don't know what they're going to store he come, the, the owner comes in makes an application we ask him a question are you going to be storing bulk gasoline or fertilizer he says no then at some point in time in the future we find out that he is he's a neighbor reports that you know there's terrible you know fumes coming off his property or something like that this gives us the capability to go in and stop what he's doing tell him that he's going to have to remove this stuff so so i think that i mean the our concern is met because we have the capability of enforcing you know some type of limitation on you know what actually is happening on the property as opposed to what they say is going to happen so and as far as detail on the front end, um, I would hope that when the application comes to us, we would ask all of those questions and then some. Right. And try to at least have an idea of, of what the proposal will include. Now, obviously, they could tell us things and, mm -hmm. and not follow through. Okay. But again, then we've ha got the opportunity to um, prosecute them on the fact that they've misrepresented. And, and, and maybe you know, the, the objective is to get sort of temporal component. How many days supply of gasoline? How many days supply of fertilizer? Maybe, maybe that's the key as opposed to weight. But when you do, when you can uh, look at that on a uh, use permit by use permit basis and make that as a condition of that use permit, because it could. 
And, and the tricky thing is it could change as the business picks up and as yeah. they go Well, then the they'd have to come back in. Well, I don't think you can pick one size fits all two right, right now oh, because oh, yeah. it may be a larger piece of property and have a larger business or it may be a smaller piece of property. And, um, yeah, but I mean, I'll, I'll say to, to, to Councilman Zalbert's point, though, the second that we attempt to enforce and bulk is undefined, you can rest assured, oh, it's not bulk. Yeah. And, and a, that's my point. This and, is a bulk. And, and with, mm -hmm. um, out of all respect for everybody's comments, even if the property goes from three to five to acres, is that a larger storage is still a public safety hazard. Um, and so if we can't define it here tonight, what I would ask is that the council, not council, that our staff add that as a definitive um, condition that you guys have to pursue as staff with each and every case. I, I just think that, again, we've got some other instances, um, even if not in the landscaping business, where we've heard from the public about concern with adjacency, um, whether it be gasoline or fertilizer or pesticide. And I think just because this happens to be a slightly different business doesn't minimize the concern of citizens that suddenly a business could be located next to them, even on AG1 land, without a real clear delineation about what's allowable and what's not. And I think from an enforcement standpoint, as soon as we have it so widely defined, um, it becomes difficult to enforce. And I think that that's what we've heard from the community development staff in the past, is that when it's too broadly defined, it's very difficult to enforce. And so I, I don't, I guess I'm not quite comfortable that we're getting where we need to on that issue. Um, if we can't get there tonight, I would just ask that somehow we make sure that that becomes a, a very definitive step in the process with every application before it even comes to council. Bill, we're not think Alan next. <clears throat> One more comment on bulk storage, and I think we talked about it earlier, was uh, those materials that aren't hazardous. And uh, all my mulch, soil, uh, aggregates. And there's an installation right up the road here on the other side of Bethany that has bulk storage and stockpiles of those materials. And they get to be quite high. And they're very close to an adjoining residential area. Uh, I don't think we ever came up with any. Uh, definitive way of addressing that, but uh, it, I think it's an issue up there at that one facility right now. Uh, it's, it's not only a, a visual uh, element of pollution, I guess, it's an actual uh, element of uh, pollution, airborne uh, erosion, airborne. Uh, uh, materials that are, that are spread around. So I don't know if you want to get into the weeds in that one. And, uh, well, when, I, when we brought that same it, uh, dish issue back to the Planning Commission, they, they really felt like without, similar to the bulk storage of, of the hazardous materials, um, they felt like they, they just couldn't put a limit on that that would cover everything, that we would have to handle those individually based on what they planned to store. Mm -hmm. and where they plan to store it. You know, if it was in the back in, in an area that was low, that didn't adjoin any other residential areas, well, they might be able to put it quite a bit back there and no one ever know or be the wiser and it not cause problems. Um, How would you handle something like that? Uh, would you handle it during the application phase and the approval of the permit? Yes, sir, we'd uh, ask for that. Do you think there's enough language in there or latitude in, in in this ordinance to, to handle that. Yeah, and they would have to show those areas where they plan to um, stock, for instance, um, on their site plans. And that way we can then talk to them about how they would either enclose that or um, how, how big they would be. Again, you know, if they were, um, typically those, those are into the side of a, well, and, and you probably know this more than any, uh, into the side of a, a steep grade that you'd have one level where they dump and the other level where they pick up, and, and those are typically divided. Um, and yeah, those again, that would be shown on the site plan. So I didn't want to. I don't want to get into uh, discussing every eventuality <laughs> or condition out there, but uh, I think that's a, a point that uh, needs to be addressed, and certainly during application time. 
Okay. That one you could address. Um, thank you, Mayor. This message, I guess, is for Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard, are you comfortable with the, um, the use of the non-mandatory language in item number six of the recommended language? Um, we again use must rather than shall. We use it twice. I would like to actually I have a note on my document here. A maximum of two commercial vehicles used for the, I think Mr. Councilman Lusk, landscape, not landscaping, but landscape business. Rather than must be screened, I was going to see if the council would consider are allowed to be screened. That, that is language of permission, is it not? We're, we're simply giving the property, the applicant, the ability to screen those two vehicles as opposed to having them inside a facility. Well, but we don't want them parked outside either. Right. So the intent is to the intent is to shield them, recover them, you know. Yeah, the intent the is bear, the, so. not to be any more than two, and that those two are screened. Screens are stored should inside. Be a must. Can you not? Can, would it not be better to say a maximum of two commercial vehicles used for land for the landscape business? shall be enclosed or be screened such that they cannot be viewed from adjacent properties or public right-of-way? I like shall. I'm very comfortable with that. I'm, yeah, I just want to make sure that it, it doesn't have an awkward application is all. Uh, the way I interpret that is just is that it either, it either has to be in a building or it needs to be screened or it's not allowable. Yeah, well, that's the intent, yeah. Well, the, the storage is the second additional commercial vehicles must be, again, we can change that, shall be parked and or stored inside a building. So you only get two that aren't inside the building. Mm -hmm. And is legally a shall stronger than must? It is. <laughs> I mean, what is your purpose? It, it is. Sh sh shall is the golden standard. Uh, absolutely non-discretionary. So, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm more comfortable with shall. Julie. Thank you, sir. Um, going back to Council Member Lusk's point, and I think it's a very good one, is that there is, again, an unintended consequence that this business that is intended for AG1 <coughs> could become more commercial in terms of intensity if suddenly aggregate soil and mulch, et cetera, beca became more the norm. Um, when would it not be possible to just extend that list where it says instead of just or any other material right after insecticides to include some of the listings that Councilmember Lusk just noted. And at least it sets the stage that that's something that you're looking at and this is not intended to become a clear life or a bulk business even in those materials. It would seem that that would address it. It still gives flexibility but to not mention those I think leaves open something that wouldn't and could become an unintended consequence. Well, these are all hazardous materials that are listed here, and that's why they're listed well, but, as. But you, it doesn't say hazardous material. Yes, they yeah. are. But you could also we indicate that the bulk storage of these others is also prohibited, so as to not, in, so as not to create um, the sort of business that Councilmember Lush just noted. Well, let me ask you this, Councilmember Bailey, and I want this is for Lynn too. Is it? that or any other material, because Councilman Thurman is correct, that's in a line, a string of hazardous materials, and then all of a sudden we throw in that or any other material, which means, of course, anything. Is that, is that the intent? That's what it is intended? It's, it's not intended for no other bulk storage, because it's, so it doesn't become a... Well, it's intended, actually, it's intended primarily for those hazardous materials. We didn't want to get into calling out hazardous materials simply because we don't want to get into the to having to federal the regulations of that. But in, in number eight, we do address the, those materials which we are, which you're talking about. You know, bark, mulch, topsoil, sand, and it says stone, limited grit. quantities. And, and in limited it, quantities. So yes. does that imply no bulk of those materials under number eight? Well, I, that, that would cause me a little concern about eight and ten. I mean, I would just want to be careful about the or any other material because if you read that with the qualifiers in front of it, it, it doesn't have the hazardous. But it's the issue of bulk. I mean, the point is that bulk, because a, a bulk facility that handles only the in and out of bulk material is not a landscape business. It's a it's a different business. We have some of them around. But they're not typically adjacent to AG1 Act residential land. So it's a more commercial. So then they wouldn't be a landscaping business. That is one. My point being, I think Councilmember Lust brought up a great point: is does this cover us so that it doesn't become? under the guise of landscape business, 
a much more commercial storage of and sale of these other items. And because the retail component's not part of it, do you believe we're covered? I think my point was uh, more from the standpoint of uh, being a, a pollution uh, issue, a visual pollution and, and uh, airborne pollution. Right, and so, well, it still applies. So your point as well as the, my point being the adjacency issue in addition to the visual and the air pollution is that the bulk storage of those things starts to be a very different business. Personally, I would, I would prefer to handle that on a case-by-case yes. case basis. I mean, that's just me personally. I mean, this is, it's AG1, and uh, I mean, I don't want to get into the point of, you know, well, we're, we're how much a, is how much. Yeah, and we're at a point where, you know, we can either defer this if, if the, you know, council is not comfortable with it, continue on. We can uh, approve it or we can deny it and go back to our original uh, I think ordinance. I we put a lot of good work into this. I think it's worthy of voting on. And yeah. I just have one other question, please, of clarity. All right. Okay, separate from the vote, just of clarification. Under number one, yes, where it said roadside produce stands, I don't recall seeing that before, and I guess I'm not sure that I understood it. Um, because isn't that really a separate issue? We're saying that these businesses are not supposed to have a, a retail or a wholesale component. Uh, it seems to me that the roadside produce stand really is a separate and distinct entity, and I wasn't sure why that was included here. However, if you're growing flowers in your greenhouse as part of your landscape business and, and you want to have a produce stand under every other area of AG1, you can do that. I, mean, I don't think there's anything so, much more agricultural than a roadside produce stand. But because but there's no size limit, what then, where is that then defined? Yeah, I mean, is, there's, a is there a double. size restriction? Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Location and size. And Calendar duration. years of operation. Yes. Right. So it can't suddenly become larger than with an, again, unintended consequence because the reality right. is we need to be aware right. of those. Right. That's correct. And It'll was that be historically limited. part of the landscape business? Definitely. No, I don't think that was. In fact, um, yeah, you should discussed say no. It. Right. I don't think that was, in fact, in a part of the original landscape definition, but let me just double-check that. So it's one thing if, if that's being grown on the land. It's another if it's being yeah, that brought in to then sell effectively as a retail element. Right. Yeah, the intent and, and definition in roadside produce stand is that it would be grown on site. Okay, so that would carry forward. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I can't bypass the retail sale component and suddenly bring in flowers that are being grown elsewhere and claim that I'm not selling retail and set it up just to set it up on the street. That's correct. Okay. That's the intent. Yes, ma'am. And, and you believe that legally that's covered? By the roadside stand permit, yes. Thank you. Okay, Alan. I have a, a question and then I'll, I'll um, have a motion if that's okay. The question has to do with number six. Could staff yes, just tell me what the intent is behind number six? Is the intent that you can have a thousand vehicles on a piece of property and you can only have two of those screened, and the rest of them have to be stored uh, in part inside a building. Uh, yes, sir. The number of vehicles will be limited by the size of the building. There's a limitation on the size of the buildings and the total number of buildings. So. And so we do limit the number of commercial vehicles that could be associated with any given landscape business by what? By limiting the size of the building that those could be stored within. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and right. those could also be limited as a condition of zoning, a right. condition of the use permit when it Absolutely. came before. Yes, ma'am. One final question, quick one. <laughs> Does this uh, preclude having a landscape business in C1? No, sir. You can still have a landscape okay. business in C1. Thank you. Jill. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Um, Agenda item 10 dash, uh, we call this 1300 or 1301? 06. 10 06. Rezoning item 10 uh, Well, I was looking at the agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'll make a motion to approve RZ 10 06 <laughs> to amend the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance Section 64 1820 Landscaping Business, Plant Nursery, or Garden Center with Indoor Retail Component. 
Um, the language would be that that was recommended in the clean copy of the city attorney's recommended edits the planning commission chairman's input and mayor and city council suggestions from the march 14th 11 work session it was included in our packets page one and two um, with the following changes to, to number six um, line one of that item a maximum of two commercial vehicles used for the should say landscape business instead of landscaping Next word, um, deletion of the word must and insertion of the word shall be screened such that they cannot be viewed from adjacent properties or the public right of way and shall be parked on specifically identified portions of the property. Additional commercial vehicles and equipment, deletion of the word must, insertion of the word shall be parked and or stored inside a building. The rest of that um, item remains the same. Also to item number nine, deletion of the commas. I don't know what those are there for. That's the end of my motion. Councilmember Tar, may I recommend respectfully with Lynn's help one more modification to be made to sure. the motion on number ten, uh, the on-site bulk storage of gasoline, et cetera, et cetera, or any other environmentally sensitive material is prohibited. Lynn, is that, is that okay? That'll work. Thank you. All right, and in addition to those changes um, to number 10, the insertion of the word, of uh, the phrase environmental sen environmentally sensitive uh, between the words other and material. That's the end of my motion. Yeah, I have a question. Can you clarify that on number 10? Okay, let me, uh, has it been seconded? No, it hasn't been I'll seconded. I'll second it because we had to second it before we can discuss it. Um, number 10 would now read, the on-site bulk storage of gasoline, diesel fuel, and other petroleum products, fertilizers, insecticides, or, uh, or any other environmentally sensitive material That's item 11. is prohibited That's 10. item 10. It's, 10. it's, it's 11 on the clean copy. It's 11 on the old. I'm still looking yeah. at the market. On the clean copy. Okay. And Council Member Tarr, uh, Robin, I made one more. Uh, just to get this correct, the purpose of the it again, on number 12, uh, it says access should only be allowed from the request to make that from minor arterial or collector streets. Uh, just to make it consistent. Make She'll be allowed from minor arterial collector streets. Minor or arterial or, or collector or streets. Can we? We would, you, would you withdraw your second? Yes, I will draw it and remake it as soon as you finish. <laughs> All right, in addition, uh, number 12 shall, should read, access shall be allowed from arterial or no, oh, minor, minor, minor arterial, arterial or, or collector or streets as depicted, and then the rest continues to the end of that period. Yes, and if you would verify, because I was working from the markup copy, that item number 10, perhaps your 9, did not change, which said all landscape debris and refuse shall be contained in appropriate size containers. That did not change. In, included in my motion, I did delete the commas from number 9. So you did not because those are superfluous. That was only as it related to the bulk storage. Right. Correct. Yes. It, yeah, the intent didn't change. It just makes it. Make yeah. It, yeah. And, one, and one more thing. There's no such thing as a minor collector street in our definition of streets. Right. We've That's got like collectors or minor. Oh, did yeah. we say that? Yeah, he said yeah. minor arterial or, or collector streets. I thought I heard it the other way. Sorry, yeah. just wanted to make sure. Okay, point of, point of order. No one's resecond. No one's second. I second yeah. it. I, second I, second it. Right. I was going to restate it if right. I needed to. All right, staff <laughs> <laughs> clear on the motion. Yes, sir. We've got we'll it. Ha we'll have it on the record. It'll You're clear. Okay. I have a motion by Councilmember Tart, and I have a second by Councilmember Thurman. Now I'll open up any discussion. Councilmember Baird. Um, I just want to come back to the earlier. Um, I just wanted to come back to the earlier discussion about the fact that the commercial vehicle definition um, is not before us. Um, I'll just say again, regardless of how this vote goes forward, it concerns me that we're approving something without the definition of the commercial vehicles having gone before the planning commission because I do believe the intensity of use varies depending on how you define those commercial vehicles. Um, and so with that, it's difficult for me to, I, I support some of the changes that have been put forward, um, but I think the timing of not having commercial vehicles defined in advance of approving this 
it's troublesome to this council member um, as it relates to concerns that I've uh, been contacted about from citizens. And I think intensity of use is one of the potential unintended consequences as we make this change. You know, would it, uh, commercial vehicle, a commercial vehicle is registered with the DOT and has to have, you know, all kind of requirements and things like that. I mean, in, in this, moving forward, if, as we address this later, would that not be a fairly clean cut way to address commercial vehicle? The point being if it requires a commercial CDL license? Not a CDL, yeah. but just a certain, you know, a, a work trucks and weight, you know, they have to be um, licensed by the DOT or inspected and whatnot and show their <laughs> So, other than just pickup trucks and passenger cars. But anyways, moving forward, that's... And I'll just say, Mayor, that what concerns me on behalf of citizens is that I think that when folks envision um, a potential landscaping business that's more agriculturally related, they're not expecting to have cement mixers um, and large tractor trailers. Concrete. 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 But I, I do believe that, that that opens the door for some unintended consequences, and so I'll just... For the record, those are my concerns. So it's going to make me, it's difficult for me as a result to support some of these other changes because it now includes this potential um, not yet defined commercial vehicles. And I think that some of these vehicles are too intense for agricultural land. So right now you're, you think we're going to be taking a step backwards with this? Um, no. yeah, that, was, that was my question. Yes, yes. I, I believe that without defining commercial vehicles, allowing that this, as if it were to pass without a definition of commercial vehicle, without some restrictions of the type of commercial vehicle, that this is opening the door for more intensive uses um, of some of our agricultural land. So, but that implies that, that we're, we don't, we've got restrictions on commercial vehicles on property now, and now we're opening it up. Is that what you're saying? This list of commercial vehicles says that if you pass a no, 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 that's not my question. My question is, right now, on AG1 land, we've got restrictions for commercial vehicles. Is that what you're saying? I believe no. that some of the language is currently more no, restricted. Yeah, I don't think we've got anything that so. restricts anything. So. Okay. And that's part that's of my concern with changing the definition on AG1 land without defining what commercial vehicles. The intent, supposedly, was to make sure that this became more... Um, refined and, and by not addressing the types of commercial vehicles and specifically calling out the two commercial vehicles that currently would include a cement or a concrete truck. They wouldn't currently include that because we don't have that definition yet. Uh, yeah, I'm, and, and that's why I guess I the way I'm reading this right now, this ordinance allows for any vehicle or any equipment to be garaged or screened in such a way that cannot be viewed, blah, blah, blah. We don't provide clarification as to what kind of vehicles are included now right. so I don't I don't I don't see how until we until we consider this proposed definition I don't see how this is opening up anything at this point I'll say that I think part of it and again this is just um, because I, I feel the need to at least make that comment historically the landscaping business was tied more to the sale or storage of organic or inorganic, inorganic materials and, and and then it it gave some more specificity, if you will. Um, and, and so I'll just leave it at that, that I personally believe that we should be better defining commercial vehicles before, not after, we approve this. I think it does potentially open up some unintended consequences that go beyond an appropriate intensity for a business on an agricultural piece of property. I can see your point. Is not any reason why we can't have staff proceed on that? Well, they are. Do that. Yeah, I'm just a we can. And in the same time, uh, define roadside produce stands. Okay. And I was just simply suggesting that before I could vote to sure. support this, I believe that having those commercial businesses, commercial sure. items, okay. and vehicles defined before we approve the other. Yeah, that point's clear, very clear for the record. Um, if no other questions, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Be opposed? That's, uh, we've got the five to one. Okay. Motion passes. Ken, do we use the term commercial vehicle anywhere else in our ordinances? That's a pretty broad statement. I yeah. Put I'm sort of using you as Google real quick. Yeah. Just let me, let me ask you. Yes. <laughs> you need to do a word search. Do a word quick. search. I don't know. 
but we can I check. We can check. Do you do it? With, only in the um, terms of uh, under the police about commercial vehicle and inspections, but that's the only thing, and there wasn't really a definition. I looked over in the other parts of the code, and there's no definition. Yeah, and, my, and, and we'll move forward with that. And my, my hope would be that as you guys look at commercial vehicles, there may be some commercial vehicles as it relates to the landscaping business that are more in keeping with allowing these on AG1 land than others. I think that some of these, by their very nature, by their very size, um, are in much more intense use than what we claim this is intended to do. And so I just ask for your consideration when those consider are considered at the planning commission when it comes back before us. Okay. We'll uh, believe that's all our business. I'll move on to uh, reports. Is there anything the council would like to report on? Is there anything staff would like to report on? Actually, I've got just a few. Um, first, I'd like to ask uh, Jason to come up and give you a quick update on the website. Yeah, it is. Okay. Good. Um, uh, City Manager Larder Bloom asked that I bring you guys just a quick update. Um, as I'm sure you saw, we started posting information about arrests on Facebook, figuring that this would, A, help our residents to know what our police are doing um, out on the streets every day, and then also help us touch a lot more people because they're very interested in that sort of thing. And I just wanted to tell you that in a week, um, we have increased our page visits, uh, 552 page visits from about 130. Wow. Uh, and we've, on Facebook, too, because you put them on Facebook, I noticed. That's, that. that's, that's what it is. It's on okay. Facebook. Our Facebook, um, our, our, we've had 244 monthly users add in a week, uh, and 137 people like us. In a week. <laughs> so, we should use quotes around that like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but so it, it's really helping. And, and we think that this is important because this is a real inroad in some of the questions that we've been uh, dealing with with this strategic plan. Because um, we, we have communications, but they're pretty good for people who are interested in city stuff. So how do we get to where people are? Because we know where they're not. And this is, an, this is we think, an important inroad into that. So I just wanted to give you an update on that and, and know that it's working pretty well and that we're reaching more people than we ever have before. Good deal. And I'll just say that I think it also speaks to the fact that people want to be protected and they want to be safe in the city of Milton. Absolutely. So hopefully that applies to everybody. On other business, um, it appears that uh, we've got a special uh, called work session with Lou next Wednesday to talk about the crab apple plan at five or six. Do you all have a preference? Mm -hmm. Five or six I PM? We said Tuesday. <laughs> no. uh, when Chris asked Tuesday is Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday is planning commission and so we were trying not to interfere with that. Okay. All right. Do so we so know good. at this point who would be available on everybody except I think for everyone. Me. I can maybe more. Bert too. So was, no, Bert too. Was the other one? Are you okay I'm, with that? I'm, I go out of town Monday and I don't get back until Thursday. So you don't really have a choice. I, I mean, yeah. it's kind of one of those things. I think everybody wanted to meet. Um, those, are you okay with? I mean, obviously you got prefer to be. to be there. Okay. That's a work I'm, session, correct? I'm not sure. Yes. Bert. Yes, ma'am. Work session. And I don't, I mean, I didn't, I don't know what everybody's schedules are, um, but hearing Alan, your point about not being in town, and I know that we have rules around when somebody can dial in or something, but because it's a work session, uh, I don't know. I, I wonder if, it, you know, if Bird and Alan are both out, would there be any reason that they couldn't dial in and listen, and if they had a question, participate, because it's not a voting activity? Um, I'd love to care. Yeah. So I just throw that out. I would think so, because the public can watch it online, right. so. I, I just, right. Given that it might apply to two council members, it would be. I surely sure. would be comfortable with. Maybe we can. That. Um, we'll make that available. Have it available. And then, okay. Would that mean? Is that going to mean going to be at night, like? Five or six. Five, Five or six p.m. Which and there's no shower or must be? associated with that office. <laughs> <laughs> it's an opt-in. Yeah. Thank you for allowing. That. <laughs> Five o'clock or six o'clock? Do we have a preference? Six. six. Gentlemen and ladies. 
Six, 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 six going once. Happen if it has to. Six going twice. Six o'clock it is. All right. Thank you. Um, on another piece of business, the um, strategic plan HOA meeting is scheduled for Wednesday at seven at White Columns. That same day. So, if the you want to be at the HOA, yeah, it, that's what it looks like. Uh, special called meeting HOA Wednesday. At what time at is it? Seven. It's Why don't seven. we do it at 5.30 then? Okay, that so we'll gives the us an hour up. and a half. We're yeah. just running out of days and times. So. What, what was that? What the Lou Crabapple work session was scheduled originally at 6 o'clock next Wednesday, and then also the strategic plan HOA meeting mm -hmm. for HOA, specifically geared for HOA presidents, at, at what time? is on Wednesday at 7 okay. at White so, Columns. That's what Karen mentioned, 5.30, just but, to give us a little more time. Yeah, I guess an hour and a half with... Is that, there any way to separate those two? And ha again, I think from a citizen perspective, if, if you've got a citizen who's interested in crab apple, which is kind of strategic, and also wants to attend the strategic meeting, I mean, the only thing I know, you know, I know it's that's already been advertised, right? Yes, sir. And the and the one with blue is top. So the only option I think, if we want to be moved to five, I'd but, be willing to move to five. So uh, that's what's the rest of the council want to do on that? Do you think they'll take more than an hour and a half with Lou, or what do you think? That all depends on yeah. you all. I mean, but if it does, it does. I mean, right. hopefully, yeah. if there's a citizen who wants to get a vote, they can come to lose meeting, make their comments, and, and go to the other meeting. So, um, <clears throat> well, does five thirty work? I mean, I know. Sure. I guess yeah. Six. Would you rather? Would you rather keep it at six? I would rather keep it at six. Is, uh, any other? Rather keep it at six. Tell me when to be there. Okay. All right, Julie. For and I do respect the preference for six, just for purposes of citizens that would want to be at both, because it does yeah. concern me to have those two. I, I well, was, you'd rather have five thirty, not for me, but for citizens Karen. that would want to be at both. Yeah. Here's what I would say, Joe. Well, just mean, a little extra information. That HOA meeting is supposed to be was originally intended to be HOA presidents and board members. That so they were they were using that forum as a um, I guess to get the HOA's input. Now that's not excluding other citizens, but that was what it was primarily for. Mm -hmm. So. I can yeah, yeah. I can do either five thirty or six. I'm flexible. I'm fine with six. If, That's fine. You know. Okay. Six. Let's keep six it at six. All right. And then the last thing, if you have any questions or need any other um, answers, Chris is available by email. Okay. Did he win his game? That's all that's on my list. Did he, did he win his game? They were on tonight. I don't know. They're he hasn't texted good. me that yet, so we'll see. They're playing good. <laughs> okay. Well, that so. was an important thing for us to have in oh, staff yes. report. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did Paul slide? Did he hit hard? Did he run fast? All right. I'm going to conclude sure this meeting, and everybody can hang around if they want to talk. Uh, I'm going to conclude, the, conclude this meeting. Do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. second. Uh, motion to second. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, guys. Thank you.